In many ways, the modern world began about 200 million years ago. As the Triassic period ended and the Jurassic period began. Although the world looked very different then than it does now, patterns were established that would produce the Earth we live on today. Life in the Earth's seas recovered from the mass extinction that had occurred at the end of the Triassic period. On land, the dinosaurs that had originated in the mid-Triassic diversified dramatically. Dinosaurs lived on every continent, and they ranged in size from a crow to a blue whale. More than 600 kinds of dinosaurs have been discovered. Certainly many times this number existed. They were the dominant group of animals on the land around the world. They reigned as the supreme land vertebrates for more than 140 million years. Other kinds of reptiles rule the seas, such as ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs, and the air. Pterosaurs hunted from above, the first backboned animals to truly fly. From one branch of dinosaurs, probably small theropods like Compsognathus, evolved a group of feathered animals that could fly. The oldest of these first birds is Archaeopteryx. The Jurassic gave way to the Cretaceous, a time of great volcanic activity. The changing position of the continents altered the circulation of the oceans and distributed heat uniformly around the globe, even at the poles. The world was incredibly warm, and there may have been no ice anywhere on the planet. In record high seas, plankton formed the basis of the food chain. Predators and prey evolved side by side. Predators adapted body parts for crushing and breaking. Prey evolved newer defenses and tactics, like burrowing in the ocean sediment. Many of the odd creatures of the Cretaceous did not make it to the modern world. Among them, the strange, rudest bivalves and vast schools of predatory ammonites. The dominance of the dinosaurs reached its peak in the Cretaceous, when Tyrannosaurus rex and its cousins walked the earth. Birds evolved quickly into many forms, and so did flowering plants alongside scores of insects that evolved to pollinate them. Small mammals lived under cover in this landscape, transformed by these first flowers. But this period came to a catastrophic end around 65 million years ago. When an extraterrestrial object perhaps a comet or meteorite, hit the planet with an impact so huge that it wiped out as many as half the Earth's species, including the dinosaurs and other reptile groups. By examining rocks like the one in this exhibit, scientists have found a high concentration of elements found in meteorites right here at the time of these sudden extinctions. On land, only small animals survived, such as primitive mammals. In the oceans, this event left a much diminished cast of clams, snails, and a few others. The tertiary period began. With the dinosaurs gone, mammals adapted quickly to the new environment, evolving in a mere 15 million years from small, rat-like creatures to animals as different as whales and bats. Birds and flowers continued to diversify and expand. So did thorny snails, starfish, clams, crabs, and snapping fish in the seas, where vulnerable creatures like brachiopods and crinoids learn to survive by hiding. Around 35 million years ago, the Earth's climates began to cool, and glacial ice began to form on Antarctica. The world changed from the greenhouse world of earlier eras to the icehouse climate 
we know today. The continents continue to separate, a process that is still taking place. The changing positions of land and sea dramatically affected the climate. Where organisms move and live, how they evolved and how the ocean circulated. These immense changes provoke adaptations in living things and continue the process of evolution. This process affects us too. We humans evolved during this latest part of this long history of change in what scientists call the Quaternary Period, the time of ice and people. Self-conscious mammals contemplating the Earth, a home planet, over whose life and whose future we now have such profound influence. <laughs>